Hello, I'm Jackie Kane, and today is a special day. It's a day for a long awaited project that I've been working on. Well, sort of. If you couldn't tell from the date, this is no Donagen. It is a project that I've been working on for the past couple months, just for this very day. It's been a long ongoing tradition on the channel for me to do something zany, something fun, something a little bit different. Not necessarily to fool anyone, but a good excuse to be a little bit more experimental and do things that I may not otherwise get around to doing, or at the very least, be a little silly. Ever since I got into modding, I wanted to take this to the next level and incorporate a game into some April 1st shenanigans. But it's never quite worked out into my schedule. Until now. So, this is a mod called Golden Retriever. Golden Dog for short. If you haven't caught on already, the main gimmick is that, well, the NPCs are dogs. And the sprites and the dialogue of said NPCs have been changed accordingly. There are a few other things sprinkled here and there, and I'll go over them if we come across them in this adventure. But yeah, that's the main draw, so... I figure right here and now is a good time to say, this mod's available to play if you have the means to set it up, and if you've been able to play Donjin or any of my other previous projects in the past, this shouldn't be any harder to set up. I'll leave it at that. I feel like a lot of the charm of a project like this is experiencing it for yourself, so if you have the means, I would highly encourage you to just go check out the video description and try it out for yourself. The game basically plays like the vanilla Golden Sun after Vault. Yeah, no. I didn't waste my life modding the entire game to turn all the dialogue into bark and yip throughout the entire game. I feel like it's more important to finish up Donjin. That'll be more fun of experience. And you kind of get the point of the gimmick of this mod by the time Vault is over anyways. So yeah, all that to say, this is a very short experience that could probably be finished within 2-3 to three hours, depending on your playing pace. How quickly you go through it, how much the NPC dialogue you pay attention to, stuff like that. For everyone else, this is what this video is for. We're gonna go on this weird zany adventure together. And while we won't go over every little detail, you can expect a major quote-unquote story beast to get spoiled along the way. So, this is your last chance to experience it for yourself. Depending how much I cut out, I might leave an extra unlisted video that goes into more detail but doesn't have the commentary. But first, I wanted to highlight one of my favorite parts of the mod. If you see it, you see it. But there is something a little different about this cutscene. Something I kind of stumbled into by accident as I was experimenting around and playing with changing the sprites. Certain things showed up that weren't supposed to, and instead of correcting it, I decided to just double down on it. And I think it just leaves for a funny little Easter egg, if we even want to call it that as a result. Now, obviously, when you change everyone's sprites into dogs, there are some unfortunate side effects that come as a result. For one, there's only two major animations to the dog sprites. So you don't really see the dog lying over in pain and agony in this cutscene. And considering the fact that it's a dog, that's probably for the best. No puppets were harm in the making of this commentary. And because of that, you should also expect a lot of dog sitting and running where it's not necessary, it doesn't necessarily make sense. Since those are the only two animations that the game gave the dog sprite. As you might get a little hint from this fight in particular, the enemies in the prologue have been changed slightly. They're not any harder than the vanilla game. I want to make this mod accessible to all skill levels. Because this is supposed to be just a quirky little fun mod at the end of the day. I'm not going to challenge your skills and activate your brain cells anytime soon. It may actually reduce them, and if so, I apologize. But with the hopes of keeping the prologue from becoming too redundant, 
in the battles. I did change the enemies around accordingly. We'll see more of it when we actually go into Soul Sikkim and that, but eh, just take that as a little preview of what we have to come later on inside. I guess with having that enemy being able to delude you this early on, that can make things a little bit trickier than a casual playthrough, but as you see, I got through that fight pretty fine just spamming the attack button. You know, I think I'll let this scene speak for itself. No, Felix! Yes, ma'am. I'm looking for anyone with sign energy left, right? I think that's what the dialogue was, more or less. I don't think I was quite expecting to actually read that part of the dialogue out loud when doing this recording. I kind of came into this just expecting to explain the mod, so I didn't have too many off-topic questions prepared, but I guess we could pull out one. Do you consider yourself more of a dog person or a cat person? And don't try to troll me by saying you're a parakeet person or something, cause I'm down for those answers too. I'm down for all your obscure, favorite pet sort of responses. As for me, I feel relatively balanced between cats and dogs. I do find cats cuter, but I wouldn't blame you for thinking that I'm a dog person. I'm fairly comfortable around them, and they feel much more approachable than people themselves. We do have a dog in our household, and he's the biggest source of joy that I have in my entire life. Just ignore the fact of what that might imply about my life in general. I have always wanted a cat. We used to have them when we were younger, but they were forced to be outside because certain folks in our household didn't like cats, and let's just say it didn't end well. So the closest I'll probably get to being exposed to cats on a daily basis, at least until I move out on my own, and experience the world wide yonder are some barn cats that we have over next door. The one that really hangs around these days is especially friendly. Usually the barn cats are, while they appreciate free food, are too wild to actually approach. But the one comes right up to you and does this whole spiel of purring and rubbing around your legs until you feed it and will actually let you pet it. A lot of times there's usually at least one cat in the barn in this like that, but this one for this generation is especially friendly because of us essentially saving its life. Well, we're here. Felix is still hanging in there, and we got help. Looks like we're gonna get our happy ending after all. Look, I know things still look incredibly dire, especially if you play Golden Sun already, but these are puppies. These are dogs. Surely nothing terrible can happen to such wholesome, innocent little creatures. Oh, I'm sure that was nothing. Uh, just a little lightning in this rainstorm. Um, I have a little confession to make. One of the side effects of using an editor to mod instead of actually programming, I can't really change fate. Just the appearance of those who are doomed. Welp. Well, that ended poorly, but there's good news, not all is lost. All we have to do is go back to Vale, find more help to get everyone from the river before they drown, and everything will be okay, we just have to get straight to town and not have anything terrible happen to us along the way. Like, oh, I don't know, getting ambushed by some anime antagonist or something? But what are the odds of that?
Oh. Well, I still stand by my statement that no animals were harmed in the making of this video. It's technically true, I just can't get into why without spoilers. Good morning, Madam T. Man. Burp, burp, yep. And considering how many human people are in this cutscene, it is not as changed as you would think, so I'll probably cut around things. Plus, I'm not proud to admit it, but there was one thing of dialogue that I missed changing until I started recording. It's fixed now, but I didn't quite feel up to going back and re-recording this section, so... You'll just have to see that part of the cutscene for yourself. But I had to at least leave this much in, because the whole scene with Gary on the roof is one of the best parts of the entire prologue. Plus, how's the game going to handle the unique sprites that Dora would normally have in this portion of the cutscene? <laughs> wow, if this cutscene wasn't funny enough in of itself. Moments like this and the cutscenes earlier on, where the NPCs were talking amongst themselves, those were the reasons I look back and think, yeah, it was worth spending months of my life randomly turning NPCs into dogs just for this moment. <laughs> so with every NPC in this town in particular being turned into a dog, there's plenty of opportunities for NPC interactions that are unintentionally funny or funny for a very particular mindset. But to avoid the risk of boring everyone else watching the video, how about we cut away to our first fun dog fact. Fun dog fact! The wagging of a dog's tail actually has multiple meanings. The direction they wag their tail can tell you if they're happy or scared. I scattered these random dog facts throughout the books throughout the game to add a little more spice because I realized that just everyone saying wolf or yep could get boring after a while, but when they're all dogs, there's only so many ways you can change the way they talk. I didn't do an intensive amount of research, I just googled dog facts, looked through the first few results and was like, yeah, I'm a dog owner, these sound right. So it's just for a fun silly mod, not factual information to take to your research paper. So while I think they're correct, don't hold me too reliable if they're not. It's just fun, silly dialogue made for a fun, silly little mod. Anyways, these fellas aren't dogs, so they don't matter. Give me one sec to get through everything that you've seen already. It's time for another fun dog fact. Dogs do have dreams. If you notice one bark in your sleep, they're likely having a cute little dream of playing outside or chasing their tail. Now, I'm not a scientist, so I can't prove that's what they're dreaming, but I have seen a dog dream before. There's been plenty of times I've been sitting with our little doggy friend while he's taking a nap, and he'll just start doing little barks and yips, completely out of the blue. It's a cute sight to behold. I do also recall him snoring from time to time, but that's not as cute, so we're not going to dwell on it. Anyways, while we're here, I guess we can stock up on some weapons and armor. The prologue is easy enough that you don't really need it, but... I came all the way here to experience some extra dialogue, so why not? Wait, this isn't a shop. Who's that guy? Oh well, I'm sure he's no one of a portions. While we're here though, why don't we go over another fun dog fact? Dogs can sense a change in the air, allowing them to sense incoming storms. This is actually something I've noticed in animals in general, not just dogs. It's kind of a similar vein with how cows can sense changes in air pressure. It's not necessarily changes in air, it's changes in air pressure. And that's why they tend to lay down on the grass when a storm is coming by, because they sense that the weather is changing because of said change in air pressure. It also helps that dogs have better hearing, so of course they're going to hear the thunder coming by before we do. And that it'll sound much louder to them. That's why there's so many dogs afraid of thunder. That one's slightly an assumption, not a pure fact, but everyone knows that dogs hear and smell better than we do, so 
It seems obvious to me. Anyways, we've done a lot of preparing and chilling around Vale, so how about we head on over to our next destination of Mount Alum. We just gotta go ahead, meet up with the one NPC that's important to this game that hasn't been turned into a dog in this town. I was honestly looking around for this particular NPC, and I didn't find where he was in the editor that I'm using whatsoever. His loss. Regardless, we finally made it into Mount Elf, and as you might guess, practically nothing has changed from the vanilla game, so I'll probably be cutting out most of our time in Soul Sacrum, but I'll leave a few battles in because we didn't get a chance to properly see all the prologue enemies, especially all the abilities that some of them had. Plus, there's some new prologue enemies that get introduced in here, so that's the more reason to show things off in this particular area. If for whatever reason you're watching this and haven't played Golden Sun before, do yourself a favor and look up the Soul Sanctum and Elemental Star themes. They'll be well worth your time. The main changes to these battles that you haven't seen already include a bunch of enemies getting the buffing moves and the batlings having a chance to actually stun you before you can attack. And as a result, to actually implement that and actually get some use out of it, the batlings and all the other bat enemies are a little bit faster. I think like the mushrooms have slight regen. There's a lot of minor differences like that, but nothing so drastic that it is possible that you can go through this area without really feeling anything different. Again, I want to make things just different enough to make the prologue interesting for people who've already been through it, but want to be extra careful not to make things too difficult to ruin the more casual experience. In hindsight, maybe I could have made some minor changes to the party members as well, just to make the battles be a little bit more interesting, but it's all prologue material. You're likely not going to get beyond level 5 before the mod really ends. So there's not really too much I can do, and I wanted to keep the focus on wacky and silly. And for now though, I'll put that idea in the back burner in case I ever want to revisit it for a future April Fools or something. Oh wait, but first, this was the whole thing I was stalling commentary for. Apparently right in the last room before the Soul Sacrum puzzle and you stop encountering enemies for the rest of the, your time in Soul Sacrum, you can run into a maze, but only in the room right before that whole cutscene before you're never able to do another battle in Soul Sacrum again. Surprisingly easy to miss. The changes I made to the move pool made them feel more like ghosts, so I decided to just commit to the whole bit and just make them mini ghost enemies. With that all out of the way, I think it's time for another segment of fun dog facts. A dog's nose is equivalent to the fingerprint of a person. No two dogs have the same nose print. And they'll keep this print pattern throughout the course of their life. At least that's what the internet has me to believe. And you know, for something that's just a quirky Golden Sun mod and not a research paper, that's good enough for me. Anyways, as I started saying before about the fate of this mod, it probably won't be something I do next year, but if I'm still making mods and not pushing into my own endeavors in game design as a whole in years to come, eh, it's an idea I might consider revisiting if I'm out of ideas for a fun, quirky thing to do for April Fools and all that. So I'll put a pin in trying to mess around with enemies and classes in a way that would fit a quirky little Golden Sun mod. I'm so close yet so far to finishing version 2 of Dawn of Jin. I think all the setbacks I've had in December and January certainly don't help matters. I'm gonna still shoot for trying to have that release by the end of the year, but I will admit I'm a little less confident on it than I was like at the start of the year or more so the end of last year. 
definitely not impossible with how close I am, but I probably won't be talking too much more about Dawn Jin until I'm ready to release it. Again. So if I go on radio silence or anything like that for the rest of the year, at least in terms of working on mods, well now you know why. I gotta break out of the habit of drawing attention to my works before they're finished anyways. You know, um, just to be on the safe side. I try to be as safe as I can, but there's never really 100%. I have a Discord, and that's probably a good place to talk about that and other projects, videos, game related, and the like. But if you're paying attention to all the information in the video, you know where to look for that already. It also helps that the less I share, the more exciting it will be when I release it all at once. This scene is mostly the same, minus the dogs, but I, there's just something about Monotone or Sepita with the dogs in it that make it special enough that I gotta share it. So... Now I'll probably cut away a little bit because sure we have a little bit of barking but eventually the sage starts talking and his dialogue is going to be essentially the same as it was before. After all, he didn't turn into a dog, so what reason would he have to act any differently from before? So now we come to unbeknown to most, one of the more important decisions you make in the entire game. Do we take responsibility for our action, and set forth to save the world? Or do we ignore the call to fate, and let the world seep into its own destruction? I don't know, the whole saving the world thing seems like a lot of responsibility. I need to take a little time to think about it, and totally not just talk to every single NPC that I can to extend the mileage out of this playthrough. You know, that's a good point, Barkatin. Most of this town's already been turned into dogs, and everyone seems fine. I'm sure the world will be A-OK. -okay. Dogs are better than people anyways. What's the worst that could happen? So that'll do it for this playthrough of my little mod of Golden Sun. You know, I was gonna be a little jokester and have a little fake-out ending right here, but what better of a joke what better of a fake-out than a fake-out of a fake-out? But seriously, this mod does go all the way up to the end of Vault, and they would love to show it all off. The issue is, I'm ending this on March 29th, and I want to get this video and the mod up by April 1st. I'm cutting things real close as is, so just to assure that I have plenty of time to upload the video and have it ready to go, I think I'm going to end it off here gives people more of a chance to try out for themselves anyways. I think I will eventually do a part 2 and show off the rest of this, but feel free to let me know if you enjoyed this video and want to see that part 2. Either way, until we meet again, take care.